Hey, Demon Slayer, Season 3, Episode 10. Mutsuri Kanroji, the Love Hashira. Finally! She sure took her time <laughs> getting here. Tell him. Oh, I think I got the, <laughs> the fan subs again. <laughs> or not. I guess he actually did say that. I guess it wasn't a li liberal translation. It's not very nice. Time to slice him up sexily. <laughs> I worry for her. She's like so optimistic. I feel like she would just stand there and take it. Did it, did it just make, it made cat sounds. Oh my god. Just when I thought our attacks couldn't get any better. Well, I mean, she's a Hashira. Let's not forget. If you're gonna do something, do it stylishly. Yeah, basically Tanjiro was saying the same thing. <laughs> we had the same thought at the same time. Tanjiro's always an admirer, as strong as he is, and I love him for that. I love her theme, too. <laughs> her delayed arrival was is so, so worth it. Making up for lost time here. Just all her forms. It's all just cat. Cat stuff. What is this, like, moisture coming out of my eye? Why do the cat sounds bring tears to my eyes? That's bizarre. She says that she plunges in. Yeah, we're really doing all our attacks. Damn, this is like such a great introduction to her, her fighting. How cool would it be if she just... ...took a demon out, but yeah, yeah, there's that detail. She just took that full full attack and she's fine. She's gotta be low HP. Now. Oh yeah, obviously. Obviously. That's not gonna happen. We're not gonna let that happen. Last minute save. From who? From a flashback. <laughs> flashback time. Of course. Yeah, I'm curious, but I actually really do want to see your backstory. A little spaced out. That is a lie. That is such an obvious lie. Big doubt. I don't know if what I'm about to say is controversial or not. It might be, but I'm just going to say it anyway. I think one of the reasons why I like her character so much, even before seeing her backstory, is she's a great example of a character who's sweet and nurturing and feminine, but also very strong. And I see this a lot recently in a lot of different forms, ranging from Western media to even K-pop these days. It's like the image of a strong woman is somewhat conflated with being overly aggressive or abrasive even, or rude. Like, I'm a bad bad person, I'm a bad girl, I'm a villain. Like, you can be strong and sweet. You don't have to be, like, abrasive to be a strong person. Strength doesn't come from aggressiveness, necessarily, I don't think. I think it comes from character. Like, what you're willing to do, overcoming your own weaknesses and demons, doing the best with what you can, caring about principles and, and values, being just, being good, sticking up for others if you have the power to do so. So it's really refreshing for me to see someone like Kanroji, who's got seemingly a heart of gold, but also has the strength, and also, obviously, fighting ability and power. 10 out of 10 would marry, in other words, long story short. Bye. Bye, Felicia. This guy didn't know what he had. Wait till he comes crawling back. I'm also really curious to see, like, how should be Mahashira, because she doesn't have seem to have the tragic backstory a lot of them do. Or maybe she did. That would give me even more amazingness to her disposition. Oh no, they're, but they're happy. This isn't gonna go well. Killed by demons. Speaking of strength. Honestly, I was kind of scared she was going to hurl the rock at her. She's the anime protagonist, confirmed. The true protagonist of Demon Slayer. And she doesn't even drop her udon. Never going to let that go. <laughs> I 
It's unreal. It's got that pro athlete DNA. Yes, because as we all know, us guys will relate. Never, we will never marry someone with colored hair who eats a lot and is strong. Those are the three most important criteria for a guy looking for a girl. Hair color, arm wrestling, strength, and appetite. No, no, no. No, thank you. Anyone else feel like this is kind of bait? Like we're being baited here? It's evoking the reaction that it's trying to evoke out of me, even though I know it's trying to evoke that reaction from me. Dodged a bullet, honestly. And we've all been there in some capacity. She says that she sweats bullets. Obviously, but at the same time, I get it. All three of them saved her. I was asking who it was going to be. Wow, Genya is calling out <laughs> Sanjuro for his obvious narrating. That didn't look good. This shield ability is really useful. I'm sure, like me, most people watching this are like, duh. Obviously, you can find someone who's gonna like you for who you are. But even though this is kind of an obvious case, I think the phenomenon itself is understandable and pretty common. The idea of hiding parts of your personality wearing a mask under the assumption that it makes you more marketable, let's say. Although I think it works in multiple directions. I also don't find it satisfying that you're just perfect the way you are. And if other people don't accept you, then that's their fault. Or if there's any kind of blame attributed to that, people are just who they are and want what they want. And that's fine. And as difficult as it can be, I think sometimes those things are worth thinking about and considering because if there's something that you agree with, like, oh, I I also don't like this about myself, or I wish I could improve in this area, because it's something that I genuinely think would be good, then that could perhaps be a catalyst for action where you, you get better as a person and that benefits you no matter what the outcome, if it's actually something good for you. But on the other side of it, and this might sound obvious, if something is genuinely you, and you really, in your heart of hearts, like that thing about you, and it's just naturally who you feel you are, it's just a matter of understanding when people don't accept that and filtering it out, and it, it does take some patience. And it's easier said than done. I mean, sometimes it's hard to know what's what. Oh, there's a, a mid-card of her being herself. Somewhere she can belong. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of that. And some people just don't get it, just based on where they are. She's just grateful. Grateful to have somewhere she can belong. What about her training? How did she like learn this stuff? There's more flashbacks that we need. I'm really hearing the, the Hina from March Comes Like a Lion now. He was in the, in the mid card too. Oh, got an admirer. That snake is just staring her down. I wonder if he can see through the snake's eyes. <laughs> this is her not picking up signals. That was you holding back? Tanjiro does it again with a couple lines. Just awaken someone's power. That's his true breathing form. Confidence breathing. Maybe you should, maybe you can inform her of, uh, you know, the actual strategy for taking down this demon. Okay, alright. It's a team effort. Love Hashiro, gets power from her heart. Damn, she's killed that thing vertically. Smell. 
It's so crazy that he can smell the direction. Like he knows the sense direction and pathway. Oh, we got some fear. We just got a scar too. I mean, they actually have a pretty good chance now that the main body is out and she's acting as a decoy or a barrier. It's slowly getting away. This really is Donnie Darko. There's only two emotions, fear and love. She just changed the whole tide of this battle. Use your gun. Gun! Oh, I'm fighting, okay. Oh, he's not gonna swallow it. Oh, he is swallowing it. He's like a reverse demon. Interesting. Never been closer beating this demon. What the? It has its own attacks? Oh, just two drops. There's so much going on, I'm worried it's gonna like scuttle out unnoticed. I knew it! He's slowly getting away, again, this time more slowly. Oh, he's literally running away from his responsibility. You guys go ahead, I'm gonna lift this tree. I don't know what I was expecting from Genya, but it wasn't that. Yeah, of course it cuts off. I forget, like, this the season's short. We only got three more episodes left, right? So we gotta be getting close to defeating this demon. Oh, I just re how I'm so stupid. I just realized that this ending is about her, right? I mean, it's all focused on her. I mean, it could be about a lot of things. It could be bigger than her, more than her. But it does seem to fit her now that I'm looking at the lyrics, especially considering all the focus on her in the animation. There's more to her backstory, though. I'm sure we're gonna get it. Something else happened. There's a gap between her complaints or her worries about life and her joining the Hashira and, like, learning to wield this crazy sword. Yes, indeed. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. It's been amazing. Thank God. It's from food? Is that a fact? Damn, is there anything she can't do? She saves a day and provides mochi? You make them pay, I mean take responsibility. I mean, it does feel optimistic. That that just changed the whole tide. It really is Tanjiro's gift. Like, he just is so grateful, so gracious, kind to others. It just gives everyone in his party a stat buff. There have been a lot of great action scenes, action moments in this season so far, but I think this is my favorite. Watching her fight is so cool. It's very different, but they put so much effort into her, her animation, her style, her movements. It's great. It's really refreshing. And I also happen to really like her and her character so far. One of the best things about the season for me is previewing the Hashira in the beginning. The two I was most interested in getting to know and seeing in action were the Hashira we got this season, both of them. They're also a really nice contrast to each other in terms of their disposition and their styles. So going forward, I'm sure this demon has more tricks up its sleeve, but it definitely feels like a corner has been turned. And like I said before, it feels like something is building. I mean, I could see these two becoming part of the team, you know, they could join the party. The network is growing. It feels a lot less lonely and more connected than ever before in the show.